what, what do I want to do on this journey? If I was done with the digging up the gunk stuff, at least for now. And I said, oh, I know. I want her to take me on a journey to see the abundance of the world and just show me some shit. I want to meet some beings. I want to like really, really experience the abundance of life. And boy, did that what she did. Psychedelics are said to shift our fixed perspectives, giving us a bird's eye view of our own lives and helping to remove the lenses of cultural, religious, and social conditioning through which we are taught to see the world. They are being used therapeutically and somatically to treat depression, addiction, PTSD, and trauma. And many are using them to explore the ineffable, those unknown realms of consciousness and beyond. Join us in Adventures of the Psyche as we learn how psychedelics have transformed people's lives. Welcome, friends, to Adventures of the Psyche. Today, we are joined by second-time guest Troy Dayton, who will share how his last experience of embracing fear with ayahuasca led to a deep forgiveness of himself and paved the road for connection. A little bit about Troy, he is a 25-year veteran of the effort to legalize cannabis and spent the last decade building the largest consortium of investors in the cannabis sector as co-founder of the Arcview Group. Also co-founded Students for Sensible Drug Policy and served as Director of Development at Psychedelic Research Group MAPS. Today, Troy leads groups through experiences that awaken a palpable sense of belonging, and he also works one-on-one -on -one to help people tap into more joy, vitality, and connection. I've had a life that has been marked by a lot of panic and fear and anxiety. I even, in my early 20s, went to the hospital twice for panic attacks that I thought were kind of like heart attacks. And through my journeys over the last 10 years, I've been working to untangle kind of why do I have this fear? Why do I deal with this panic? Why do I have this paranoia? And that of course has led to an exploration of childhood of um, all the different inputs and, and also looking at like what it means to be raised male in the society. What does it mean um, to live in such a connected world and how that impacts how we see ourselves. And in my last journey, not the one, my very first journey, I came face to face with a lot of fear and was able to like look fear in the face and even be willing to die right then and there and be willing to be okay with death um, in order to really face my fear. That's kind of how it showed up in that particular journey. Uh, after that journey, having faced fear, it like allowed me more space to really find out some of the roots of that fear. And, you know, when I was a kid, uh, kind of between the ages of, of 10 and 12, there were some things that I did that um, at the time I felt were kind of unforgivable. And I think that on some level, one of the things I kind of came to understand through my journeys and some of the therapy after my journeys is, is that, um, that that was playing a role in all of this anxiety and fear uh, and sense of fearing badness or fear, fear of being seen as bad. Um, and, and in particular with my dad, I felt as though I couldn't I couldn't tell him about it because he, he would never forgive me. Um, and I think I came to see that as maybe an important thing in my, in my, in my journeys, uh, an important thing in my life. And part of what has kept me from fully accepting myself or or fully walking fearlessly through the world. And part of what happened about a week or two before my journey uh, a couple weeks ago is I was in a breathwork session 
And it was a breathwork session particularly oriented towards catharsis. And I remember going into the middle of the breathwork session and getting to that point in breathwork where you start to have insight and being like, okay, interesting insight, um, but it's not catharsis, keep going, keep pushing, keep pushing. And I finally pushed into the point where I burst into tears and I went back to my childhood and I went back to this 11 year old. And I just loved him and told him he was um, not bad and that we all make mistakes in life and that you know, there's no sense holding yourself accountable for this the rest of your life. It was like this, like I went back and I reparented myself um, the way that perhaps my dad would have parented me had I given him the opportunity to do so by telling him what was going on. Uh, but I had to go back and kind of reparent myself, but it was from there that I kind of developed a certain kind of trust and fearlessness that when I went into my next journey, my, most of my journeys have been really hard, really painful, really scary, but I keep going back because I always get something super valuable out of it. So this time going into my ayahuasca journey, I was um, not fearful, uh, but I was still doing all the things I would normally do, like planning for the worst case scenarios, like you know, telling myself things like, this is just one plant's perspective. Uh, um, you know, uh, just relax, don't resist, just let her show you what she wants to show you, right? All this stuff, right? But then I'm sitting there in the circle and I thought to myself, wait, is it possible that like I've worked through the stuff and that now it's time to like do something awesome? Like what's my best possible outcome here? Like what, what do I want to do on this journey? If I was done with the digging up the gunk stuff, at least for now. And I said, oh, I know. I want her to take me on a journey to see the abundance of the world and just show me some shit. I want to meet some beings. I want to like really, really experience the abundance of life. And boy, did that what she did. I spent both nights, no struggle at all. It was pure entry into the most loving state I've ever been in in my life. The visions were gorgeous. The sense of love for every being, um, a sense of like inner goodness. Um, and even looking at the pain of the world and the suffering of the world and seeing how it carves us open um, for more love and, and our motivation to want to alleviate that suffering is um, beautiful. And I, I was able, there's like this, this great Rumi quote where they're out beyond the ideas of right doing and wrong doing, there's a field and I will meet you there. That was kind of the sense I was living in that field. So it meant that any issue that I was brought up either in my own life or societal issues or whatever, I could look at them and see the, the container that these, the duality was held in and be able to bring love to it and be able to see the path through to how truth can set us free. And it was from that journey that I was able to come back and plan to have a conversation with my dad um, where previously I'd be filled with utter trembling fear to have that kind of conversation. But because I had been so basking in the love of the universe and in the beauty of truth and in the belief that I don't control this thing, I'm just an actor in it sharing love and sharing what's true and, and, and being open to the wonder of possibility, I was able to have this conversation with my dad without any fear whatsoever. And I was able to tell him about some of the things that happened in my childhood that I had made myself bad for all my life. And to watch him 
feel for me when I told him that I spent the last 30 some years on the some subtle level making myself wrong or seeing myself as bad for this, he just burst into tears and just grabbed me and held me and put his, put my head on his shoulder and just rubbed it, you know, and was just like, you know, in total forgiveness. And, and, and it was so healing to me. And, you know, the great irony of it all is that, you know, I'd already forgiven myself by that point. So I actually didn't need his forgiveness, but what I did hope for is that I could be closer to him. And that happened because by me sharing this thing that I've always kind of hid from him and feared his uh, judgment, there's a part of me I was keeping from our connection. Um, but more importantly, I was, it was an opportunity for me to model the sharing of the hard stuff, which I think in my family is not, you know, I think a lot of people's family, that's not the thing. And so what that led to is my dad being willing to share with me some really hard things. And, and the, the, the combination of that has built this closeness with my dad. And, you know, it's not uncommon that I think about my dad being on his deathbed and some of the things I haven't shared with him and letting an old man die happy without having to hear the hard stuff. And I'm so glad I didn't decide to go with letting an old man die happy. And instead I decided to trust that he had the capacity to experience the hard stuff and be grown by the love that can come from the intimacy because we're all human. We all, we all, we all have regrets. We all have things we carry shame around and fear around. And it's so important to have people uh, that we can really be open and honest with um, about all of that, because the, the benefit of all of that isn't more pain. If it's done with love and it's done with truth and it's done with unconditionalness, it's, it winds up leading to beauty and connection um, because part of what makes us human is that we're all very complex and this is how we heal. Wow, Troy, thank you so much for sharing that. So you, know, you and I have had a handful of conversations sharing our own healing process, these, and I, I think there's a lot of similarities. Um, curious to people who are new on their path, how would, you, how would you describe, how would you paint the picture of healing as you've experienced, and if you had to give them a map, could you describe the process that takes you out of the untangling the muck and into the expansion? I think one of the big things um, that I that took me a, a, a long time to get is that, that when I was on psychedelics and they were showing me that I was bad um, or showing me awful things in the world or like just giving me like just this terrible, I rejected the world i rejected the place that the psychedelics brought me to i said i don't like what the mushrooms show me i don't like that um uh and what i've come to realize and i think ayahuasca is maybe special in this way um but realizing they weren't trying to show me that stuff to show me that it that i was bad or that the universe is bad or that everything's going to crumble they're showing me this because they're in service of my healing, right? Like that stuff is showing me places where I might be out of alignment or places where, um, uh, where, where there's some error in thinking or in feeling or in loving that is keeping me from accessing the, the magic of this world. And it was like, I've just been misunderstanding them for so long. Like once you get it, once you get that all this is actually in service, then you're like, oh, show me where I'm, where I'm off because I know when, if I can get clear and I can get aligned and where I'm off, then all this magic becomes possible. Thank you so much, Troy, for sharing your story. My pleasure.